Dear KKMC members and friends, God's grace and peace be with us all. Trust that we are all still staying safe and keeping well. Today, for mothers of all ages, we wish you a blessed Mother's Day. Our prayers for you are that God will truly bless and keep you always as you lovingly nurture and encourage your family members to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. This comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Now, if we remember, in mid-April, I shared that KKMC had been quietly working with one of our longtime partners, Guru, to prepare and distribute free meals to those adversely affected during the circuit breaker period. A short video on this effort has been produced and uploaded on our church website. Click on Church Life and then Recent Events, as well as on our church Facebook page. Do have a look at it and give thanks to God for blessing the, the work of our, our hands with His favour. And let us keep on praying for all who are in need of being helped during this challenging time due to COVID-19. Finally, always know that God is with us. God bless. As we worship God today, let us respond to the call to worship. We hear the voice of the risen Jesus lovingly calling us to follow him. We know the voice of the risen Jesus surely leading us to love and peace. Let us worship our risen Jesus who deserves all glory. Alleluia. Our hymn of praise is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts on full light flows before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Let us all join in now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our scripture text for today is from 1 Corinthians 13. Let us read God's word together. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I've been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide. These three, the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our guest preacher for today is Dr. Shirley Lim. She's no stranger to us here at KKMC. She's the president of Research Communication International, and she'll be sharing with us the sermon entitled Being Authentic as a Mother. Greetings, beloved members and friends of Kampong Kapo Methodist Church. I would first like to thank your dear pastor, the Reverend Kenneth Huang, for his kind invitation early this year for me to speak to you on this Mother's Day service. He shared with me your church vision to be faithful disciples in authentic community and the fact that you are covering Corinthians chapter by chapter. He asked if I could preach on the sermon title, Being Authentic as a Mother, based on the scripture text, 1 Corinthians 13, with directions and encouragement for the church, and especially for mothers. I'm certainly delighted and honored to do that. Many of us hold 1 Corinthians 13, this ode to love, close to our hearts, as the ultimate definition of love. And it has for centuries been used to epitomize love at occasions like weddings, but 1 Corinthians 13 is not only a beautiful chapter we enshrine on walls, it has a much greater significance for all of us. It's the most pertinent and precious gift that God has for each of us. Chapter 13 falls neatly into three sections that spell out clearly for us the purpose of love in verses one to three, the practice of love in verses four to seven, and the perpetuity of love in verses 8 to 13. Wrapped around by chapters 12 and 14, where Paul's instructions on the spiritual gifts to the church were written in sequential prose, Paul changes his literary style in chapter 13 to a magnificent lyrical rhythm to highlight the preeminence and powerful significance of love deep divine love that must be the driving force in our lives. Paul writes emphatically on the purpose of love in verses one to three. 
If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Paul uses hyperboles here to bring home the message that even if I speak with all languages in convincing eloquence, or if I have prophetic powers and a superior intellect to understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, or if I have all faith to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Even if I were philanthropic and I give all that I have to the poor, and even if I surrender my body to be burned, as was the practice of some in ancient Athens who thought they could gain immortality by burning themselves up, but have not love, we are nothing. And next, in verses 4 to 7, Paul tells us specifically what the practice of love is. He writes, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The practice of love is the hallmark of being authentic. Jesus says to us in John 13, 34 and 35, I give to you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Paul goes on to emphasize in the next part of our text, the perpetuity of love. He writes in verses 8 to 13, love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end, for we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. So let's wrap this chapter of 1 Corinthians 13 around our hearts and minds as we spend time to explore its deeper meanings, especially in our quest in being authentic. KKMC's vision of being an authentic community is laudable. John Wesley founded the Methodist Church on the vision of creating an authentic community of love. He wrote, I continue to dream and pray about a revival of holiness in our day that moves forth in mission and creates authentic community. 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us to be authentic. We must examine the purpose that drives us in what we do, warning us that no matter how hard we work towards achievements in varieties of services and activities listed in 1 Corinthians 12.4, and however high a position of power and prestige we attain, if the underlying purpose is not love, we are nothing. 
we are nobody. But we are somebody in Christ's love. When we love as Christ loves, he calls us friends. Jesus says in John 15, verses 15 and 17, I do not call you servants. I have called you friends. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. In fact, we are commissioned to love as he loves. Jesus in John 15 verses 9 to 11 says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. The King James Version that many of us grew up on gives us a very distinctive guidance. It reads, As the Father hath loved me, so I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Being authentic is to continue in his love, earnestly desiring to be in the flow of God's love and personally echoing the psalmist's yearnings in Psalm 42, 1 to 2. Heartfelt yearning in verse 1 to 2 of Psalm 42. As the deer that pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. That must be our purpose in life. To seek God is to pursue love. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, pursue love, for God is love. In John, 1 John 4, 8. As an authentic community, we are to recognize the giftings in each other, respecting and honoring the special and unique purpose that God has for each of us. As the psalmist says in Psalm 139, 14 to 16, we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God, who has known us even before we were formed. Anchoring on God-given purpose, individually and collectively, as an authentic community, we align with God's larger purpose. In what Paul calls the more excellent way in the last verse of chapter 12, which leads into chapter 13. And chapter 12, verse 31 reads, Strive for the greater gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. The more excellent way is 1 Corinthians 13. The more excellent way is the agape way in 1 Corinthians 13. The Greek language distinguishes agape, agape love, from the other six definitions of love. Storge, natural parental love. Philia, deep friendship. Eros, sexual passion. Ludus, playful infatuation. Pragma, long-term commitment, like in marriage. Philautia, self-love, narcissism, in its extreme form. The Greek word used for love in 1 Corinthians 13 is not any of these, but it is agape. That is selfless divine love that involves caring for and loving others without expecting anything at all in return and in spite of what they are and of what they might do. Today, on Mother's Day, we recognize that indeed God has given to mothers a premier gift of motherhood to love the agape way. Wasn't it Howard Hunter who once wrote, motherhood is near to divinity. It is the highest, holiest service to be assumed by mankind. How then can we appropriate this divine gift as mothers? How can we be authentic as a mother? In being authentic as a mother, we embrace the purpose of love to love the agape way. We are to be true to what we are, 
true to how God has differently gifted us. Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines being authentic as being true to one's own personality. That is being authentic with no pretensions. We need to be true to our God-given personality and activate our passion and our calling. What is our calling? The practice of agape love is our calling. Motherhood is God's gift to us. What we do as mothers is our gift to God. But it is often not an easy road, isn't it? As only mothers know, the pain of juggling multi-demands and upholding lofty goals at the same time. You may have read this poem on mother's pain. Dear Lord, it's such a hectic day with little time to stop and play. For life's been anything but calm since you called me to be a mom. Running errands, matching socks, building dreams with matching blocks, cooking, cleaning, and finding shoes, and all those things that young ones lose. A stack of last month's bills to read. So where, oh Lord, where's the quiet time I need? The good news is that God does not expect us to give what we don't have. That is why God first loved us, so we can love others. Over the years, we have been inspired by many mothers who exercised agape love. Thomas Edison, the famous inventor of the light bulb, America's greatest inventor in electric power generation, gave a beautiful tribute to his mother. Edison wrote, she cast over me an influence that has lasted all my life. If it had not been for her appreciation and her faith in me, at a critical time in my experience, I would never have become an inventor. When Edison was in school as a child, his teacher gave him a letter one day to give to his mother, not something we like to do. A letter from teacher. Edison's mother read the letter and her eyes were tearful. She then read the letter out to her frightened child. Your son is a genius. The school is small for him and don't have enough good teachers to train him. Please teach him yourself. After his old mother had died, Edison found a folded piece of paper. It was a letter that his old teacher wrote. He opened it up and read it. On the paper it was written, your son is addled, that is mentally retarded. I'm sorry, we cannot allow him to attend our school anymore. He is expelled. Edison cried and wrote in his diary, Thomas Elva Edison was an adult mentally retarded child that by a hero mother became the genius of the century. Thomas Edison's mother has been revered as the mother who believed in the genius in her son when everyone else saw a dysfunctional kid. She lived out 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. She bore all things, believed all things, hoped all things, endured all things. Edison's mother, Nancy Edison, was also patient and kind. The Greek for patience means to hold on and wait for the Holy Spirit to walk with someone. Know what's good for them, what works for them, bear with imperfections, bear with faults and differences, giving them time to change, room to make mistakes. Being kind in Greek, on the other hand, also means being gracious, considerate, even when others don't deserve it, being merciful. Thomas Edison, like most creative inventors, had a spontaneous exploring personality. 
and not bound by the rules, so to speak. Whilst his mother was an organized and disciplined personality, but she did not insist on her own way. She was not irritable or resentful. Verse 5 in our text, exemplified in her life. Thomas Edison wrote, I was always a careless boy, and with a mother of a different mental caliber, I should have turned out badly. My mother, and listen to this, to what he says, my mother was the making of me. The memory of her will always be a blessing. Being authentic as a mother means that we must not only have a purpose of love and a practice of love, but we must also believe in the perpetuity of love. Our text in verse, verses 8 to 13 is best understood as we see it actualized in the life of a godly mother. Susanna Wesley, the mother of John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. She is a stellar example. Susanna Wesley had faith, hope, and love. Amidst years of suffering, illness, disease, poverty, and the death of children, she accepted God's purpose for her life, practiced love, and clung on to the perpetuity of love, trusting that love never ends. Susanna Wesley had 19 children, of which nine died in infancy. One of her children was crippled, another couldn't talk until he was nearly six years old. Susanna herself was desperately sick most of her life. They were very poor. Her husband, the Reverend Samuel Wesley, was once thrown into prison because of their debt. Twice, their homes, the homes that they lived in, they were burned to the ground and they lost everything they owned. She worked in the farms, took care of the children and schooled them. Stretched and overworked, she reached out to the loving arms of God. She decided that for two hours every day, she would drop everything and go to the Lord in prayer. Often, she could only see dimly and only know in part, our text in verse 9, crying out to the Lord saying, save me from engaging in rash prayers and from abrupt breaking away to follow business or pleasure as though I had never prayed. Amen. Susanna Wesley lived a hard life. Life was not perfect. She was devastated. She prayed, help me, O Lord, to make a true use of all disappointment and calamities in my life in such a way that they may unite my heart more closely with thee. Grant me grace to stay and center my soul in thee. Amen. Susanna Wesley fixed her eyes on God's unending love, knowing that even though she only knew in part then, she will one day fully know, even as she is fully known by God. Our text in verse 12. She wrote, When I had forgotten God, yet I then found he had not forgotten me. Even then, he did by his spirit apply the merits of the great atonement to my soul by telling me that Christ died for me. Deep in her heart was that love of God, unending. Susanna Wesley saw her life as a journey towards spiritual adulthood, putting away childish thoughts and ways, a uh, text in verse 10, with God's help, she gave her children the best of care. She spent one-on-one -on -one time with each of her 10 children 
by setting up a rotating schedule. She even taught and preached to a good-sized congregation where at her home, a congregation of her own in her kitchen on Sunday afternoons. She wrote, we must know God experientially, for unless the heart perceive and know him to be the supreme good, to be her only happiness, unless the soul feel and acknowledge that she can have no repose, no peace, no joy, but in loving and being loved by him. Being authentic, that's where the power is. Being authentic as a mother, Susanna Wesley's deep impact on her son is reflected in John Wesley's tribute to his mother. John Wesley wrote, I learned more about Christianity from my mother than from all the theologians of England. Susanna Wesley felt deeply blessed when she reflected how God rescued John Wesley from the fire that burned down their house in 1709. John Wesley often referred to himself as a brand plucked from the burning fire. In gratitude to God for his unending love, Susanna Wesley pledged her commitment. She prayed, Thou hast so mercifully provided that I may do my endeavors to instill into his mind, John Wesley's mind, the disciplines of thy true religion and virtue. For Susanna Wesley, love never ends. Agape love flowed through Susanna Wesley to her two sons, John and Charles Wesley, who touched the lives of millions across time. From generation to generation, the blessings flowed through the spread of Methodism across the globe. Susanna Wesley was truly blessed to bless. Truly blessed to bless. An authentic mother, being authentic as a mother, helped her see God. I remember praying three days and three nights as I held on to my newborn baby some 40 years ago. He was dying of encephalitis with a fever of 40 degrees centigrade. I remember my joy when God stretched out his hand to bless us with a miraculous healing for my son. My spiritual life has never been the same since. I have been blessed to bless. As I'm sure you are too, we all have our stories of the goodness of our Lord, who loves us in spite of all our weaknesses. Being authentic as a mother is a God-given privilege. We see in 1 Corinthians 13 that God has given us first a purpose of love, then a practice of love, and a perpetuity of love. Like Hannah, the mother of Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2, let us then present our children to the Lord. Let us burst forth in praise to God, as Hannah did in 1 Samuel 2.1. She says, my heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. Let us continue to pray for one another in God's authentic community to see more of his glory as we serve him with love. To all mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and mentors, a happy Mother's Day. To all who have been blessed by mothers, let us remember that we too are blessed to bless many others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us. Help us to fulfill your purpose of loving others as you have loved us. As we practice being authentic in using the gifts you give to each of us, empower us that we, we may rise above 
the trials and pains of this life and know deep in our hearts that you, Lord, are patient and kind to us and your love for us is perpetual and will never end. Anoint especially the mothers around us that they will continue to be blessed to bless us from generation to generation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In response to the sermon that we have just heard, let us sing the hymn of promise, where charity and love prevail. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here to Now let us receive God's good words in our lives, the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us, now and always. Amen. And let us now listen to the choral response. May the peace of Christ. Amen.